Hi, this is David Lawrence, founder and CEO of the Mission Gate Foundation. In this video, we're going to talk about selecting the right or the correct AFO, ankle, foot orthoses, for the patient. These are not going to be athletic braces. Those will be covered under our video on bracing and sleeves for the knee and ankle. These videos we're really talking about our baseline braces in that AFO category. We are not talking about specific brands, more the categories, the type of brace and why you may choose one over the other. With patients, you always need to know both the pathology and the preference of the patient. It's a worthless brace if it's not used. So with every patient, I like to come to them with what I like to call three brace options, the good, the better, and the best brace. Best brace may be custom made, lots of bells and whistles, works beautifully. The patient may not like it for numerous reasons. The good brace is a great brace for the patient, but far less technical, easier to put on, probably less moving parts or things that can need maintenance. So I wanna go with the patient and say, well, you know, let's get the best brace for you. And you might say, well, the best brace is always the best brace. Not necessarily. The best brace in the closet is really useless. A good brace that someone wears every day can be very functional and beneficial. So you have to understand both the pathology, what are you trying to teach, treat with this patient, and also the idea of what is the patient's preference. There are literally thousands of braces in closets and we want to avoid that. We want these braces to be utilized or really not fit for a patient. What are the things you need to know? So if you're going to a patient, you want to pick that device for the patient, what do you need to know? Number one, diagnosis, of course. Interest and activities as well, but you gotta understand what is the problem? What's, what's the injury that you're treating? And also, what is their interest level? What are they gonna be trying to do? How active of a person are they? What kinds of activities and stresses are they gonna put on those braces? What's their history? In other words, the time in pathology. Really important. Let's say I'm talking to somebody with a uh, hereditary neuropathy or some type of activity or injury, illness, that's going to get worse over time, progressive. But I meet them, say, when they're 40 and first diagnosed. I'll pick a very different brace, very light, doing as little for the patient as possible, letting them do as much for themselves, as I would pick later on, say, when they're 60 or 70 years old, where they might need a very different brace. And inversely, the same thing in someone who maybe has Guillain-Barre, who's gonna be very involved at the beginning and diminish over time. So you have to know where are you with the patient at that time, and what does the patient need at that time? Next issue is the idea of um, upcoming activities. What things are they planning for that they need to do in the near future? Those are gonna be specific to what the brace demands are. And also location, this is a big one. If you've got an individual, say, lives in the city, works in an office, that's a very different situation, say, someone that lives in a rural community that's a farmer or a rancher, lives hours away from where you could get your prosthetic device or orthotic device fixed or repaired, um, and they're gonna use it very hard every single day. So they go out on day one and they beat this thing and work it really hard and they love it because they're moving so much better and it breaks and then they can't use it. They try to get back in to get it fixed. It's, it's very inconvenient and it's very not functional for them. So in that individual, you are better off with the good brace that is bulletproof, tried and true, isn't gonna break. They can count on it and it will hold up to the amount of work they're gonna be doing every day. So really these are factors you must consider when you're looking at what orthotic device to pick. You also need to consider preference, as we've talked about, patient preference. What are they willing to wear? Something with lots of straps, lots of different things that they have to be aware of, maybe something they just simply aren't going to be willing or capable of working with. With that being said, let's review AFOs then. Let's look at both custom and non-custom devices. Is there a difference? Sure, a custom device is custom made for you. It's gonna be the best possible fit. But I will tell you that off-the-shelf braces are much, much better than they once were. And there are very good off-the-shelf options for patients, and we'll kind of talk about what those look like. With a bracing, you're gonna look at this idea of alignment, stabilization, and assisting motor control, because assisting propulsion, and what are you trying to accomplish? What I wanna do now is go through when we're talking about AFOs and some of these different factors, how do they fit, what's the category, and how do you use it? Let's start with just pure stabilization. If you're talking about pure stabilization, 
This is a brace in which laces up, very stabilizing, also can help alignment, realign someone's leg and hold it in position. Now it represents a category of braces that could be laced up in, in different ways, different levels of stiffness and rigidity, but all about stabilizing the ankle. And if that's what you need, you need to stabilize the ankle, this is, can be the right brace for you, right? But you have to know, is this the brace that is gonna get the job done? And can I tolerate its use? That's a basic stabilization brace. But there are lots of braces in this category that are gonna give me ankle stabilization. However, more commonly in our realm is dealing with foot drop issues. One of the most common diagnoses people come into us and say, I've got foot drop. And really important at this point in time to think to the patient, well, what exactly does that mean to me? Because you can have foot drop, but you have to answer four questions that go along right behind that. Number one is, do you have foot drop only? In other words, I'm, everything else is fully intact. I just can't lift my foot up. I can't hold my foot up. It just keeps dropping down, but everything else is fine. Next is, I've associated weakness. Not only do I have foot drop, I can't lift my foot up, but I'm also weak in my calf. I can't push my foot down. I can't lift my foot up to the outside. These are associated weaknesses that you need to understand. And number three is tone. Do I have a tone issue? That means that I have some sort of central injury. Could be a traumatic brain injury, could be a stroke, could be other disease factors that are gonna affect the brain. And that's gonna give us tone. That means not only do I have a hard time lifting that foot up, but there's tone pointing that foot down and putting that foot into an, or the leg into an extensor pattern. You need to understand that because the brace needs to fit that diagnosis. And third, you need to understand the idea of um, this uh, control issue of instability. Is the joint not only um, not working well, but it's also unstable, it's weak. It'll roll their ankle very easily. The truth of the matter is there's often times a little bit of all those things involved. And with that being involved, you have to determine the brace that will deal with what you're deal actually dealing with. Let's start with true drop foot then, and plastic AFOs. This is your most basic PLS, posterior leaf spring plastic AFO. It will hold your foot up if your foot is dropping. It's not gonna give you much stabilization. It's certainly not gonna help you with any kind of tone issues because tone creates extension moment, an extension moment at the knee where that knee is going to pop backwards. And this knee, this brace as you come over the top will push that knee back into hyperextension. So it doesn't actually help that issue. So it can be a very good brace for a very limited utilization, very limited uh, uh, scope, but it is very lightweight. Now, going up the spectrum from that is something called an articulated plastic AFO. Now, an articulated plastic AFO allows you to hold that foot up, right, so that it, you're not gonna have that drop foot. But at the same time, these trim lines can be much larger around the sides and up the sides to create stabilization in an ankle that may be unstable. Also, as you're walking and you come over the top, the joint can articulate. That doesn't force your knee back into that hyperextension moment. So with tone, you can come over the top of this brace and give yourself stabilization of the joint, plus not set off your tone. Now, excellent brace, heavier, bulkier, and it's gonna take more fitting, uh, uh, kind of custom fitting to get this right. Now, let's say we also are looking in that same family of simply drop foot, everything else works fine. There are other plastic type device, devices that can connect to your shoe. And what happens with this is as you take a step, that device will allow the foot to come down and then pick it up as you are stepping your foot forward or to clear the ground. This can work really well if you simply need assistance with foot drop, that your foot is dropping to the floor and everything else is really working well. There are other categories when you jump into carbon fiber devices. Now, carbon fiber is very popular today. Why? Because it's extremely light, much lighter than, than the plastics. It is much lighter than steel, and it has great resilience. So as you bend it, it springs back with a lot of energy. That can give you propulsion, that can give you assistance, but in this particular case, this type of brace simply holds you up. You're in neutral foot position here, and from there, it lifts that foot up when you go to take a step so you don't trip. And that can be set up in multiple different ways from on one side to two-sided. 
where you're just simply getting more lift, but basically the same premise. I simply want to lift my foot up so I don't trip. That's a carbon fiber device that does the same aspect as the plastic device to lift your foot up. But if I have tone issues in here, this can lift my foot up, but that lift up of, of the foot could cause a reaction of your tone and create a stiffening of the leg. So you have to make sure you check when you put these braces on somebody to have them walk with them and see if you get a tone reaction when that brace lifts that foot up harshly. Now, progressing on to there in carbon fiber, we are looking at our options then that are non-articulated and are not gonna be preloaded lifting your foot up. This category here, we're talking about a brace that is a fixed, will hold your foot up, stabilize your foot, and as you though roll forward, it is going to bend and return that energy to you. It's gonna bend and return that energy to you. That's a, called a floor reaction brace. As you press into the ground, it gives you the energy back. What's good about that? If I have a good, strong um, quad and I don't have any tone issues and I come over the top and I have a weaker calf muscle, this will help me propel and move forward. Neuropathy patients do well with this. But if you have an issue of a tone where that knee goes into hyperextension, this device will force or push the patient into hyperextension. A really cool brace, very nice. Not the right brace for that particular patient. Now we talked about custom versus not custom. One other option here is the same look at first glance, but there's now a cupped mechanism down here around the foot. And this cup mechanism is custom made to stabilize the person's foot, help them give them stability and keep that foot moving straight forward. It still bends the same way, still gives you energy back, but a larger cuff also at the top, so it really stabilizes and holds that shin in place. And it's custom made to the individual. Where it can work very, very well, and there are also custom options in which they create more of a spiral look to the device. Right? The issue is always the same. Does it bend and return the energy? Do you need stabilization? If so, you're not gonna get much stabilization with this. It's not gonna wrap up around and stabilize. But if you simply need lifting my foot and propulsion or push off to go forward, great brace. If I'm in something that I have a tone problem where my knee hyperextends or snaps backwards, then that is gonna be a brace that's gonna force or cause more of that same motion you don't want. Now the next guys then come into true, the highest level floor reaction type braces. These braces have a front to them. That means a carbon fiber loaded front plate. What that means is as you walk forward, you lean your shin into that front plate. You get a lot of vertical lift from the device, a lot of pressure from the device, and all that energy comes back to take a very aggressive, help you take a very aggressive step. As long as your knee isn't, uh, is not hyperextending, this is a great brace that you can really give you vertical lift and assistance with propulsion, as well as just simply holding your foot up. And there are versions of that from different companies that do the same process. A front-loaded device, which the shin leans into to create compression or pressure, and you get great return from that pressure or compression. So next, is really what we call offloading braces. Now an offloading brace is exactly what it sounds like. It's a brace in which you can't load or compress your ankle because of maybe a compression fracture, some major injury uh, to the ankle. And this is a brace we used to call a PTB brace or a brace in which you bring the support up to just below the knee. This is a shin support device. And you're gonna create quite a cuff in which is gonna absorb the weight from the foot and that transfers the load up to that offloading device. Again, can work very well for the right case. So you really have to have each individual brace selected for the actual needs of the patient. Shoes are important as well. Remember, in any one of these devices, they are, are subject to what the shoe is gonna offer as well. You want to always put that patient in the best shoe possible that's fairly flat, laces up and stabilizes the brace in place. Uh, putting a, any one of these braces in a flip-flop is really not gonna work very well. It's not gonna stabilize, it's not gonna hold the patient uh, into a good neutral alignment. 
We have an entire uh, video later on, I ask you to check that out, on shoes and what shoes to wear with braces and why certain shoes work better than others. Suggestions. My suggestions to you are this. Select the brace for the pathology and the patient. Understand, is this a stroke patient? I need to have something that is gonna be stabilizing but also allow articulation, right? Allow that knee to not be forced into hyperextension. At the same point, if I have someone with a more neuropathic issue where, let's say, neuro, um, peripheral neuropathy or weakness in the leg, I might want something that more stabilizes and gives them a lot of propulsion and ability to stand up tall. Now, there are various ways you can think about that, but one option or one uh, case that comes to mind that might make sense is a gentleman that had bilateral knee replacement. It's a little bit older gentleman, but he had bilateral knee replacement. He did well at the beginning, but he also had peripheral neuropathy, so his feet were quite weak. So as he went to stand, he regained full knee extension, but he just couldn't hold it. He kept drifting and not being able to stand up tall and straighten his legs. Now you might say, well, put him in a knee brace then. No, the knees were working fine. He couldn't get enough stab stabilization from the ground. So we put him in bilateral floor reaction type braces. And this then gave him the vertical lift to stand up straight and continue to walk. It made him very functional. So it was an orthotic device, bilateral orthotic devices, for a knee problem. And that can occur. This is the problem solving we're talking about. When we're looking at selecting the right brace for the patient, it's really truly figuring out what does that person need, not simply what brace do I have to offer. So selecting the right brace should be a team approach. The orthodist, the therapist, the doctor, the patient involved. And remember that the shiny ad does not always mean it's the right brace for you. We get a lot of people come in that have seen an ad in a newspaper or heard something on the TV about this brace and it's the best brace ever. Remember that brace may be the best brace ever for a particular diagnosis. Make sure that what you're picking in any kind of orthotic is right for you. Thank you for watching and we hope you found this helpful. This video is part of a series on orthotic rehabilitation ranging from selecting the appropriate orthosis to comprehensive gait training with an orthotic. We encourage you to view our other videos in this series and to share them as well. You can find them on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash missiongate. Stay up to date on our latest content. Click the link in the corner to subscribe and be sure to like and share this video. Also, let us know what you think in the comments section below.